Hey guys, Scott Martin here. Wanted to give you a fish hound post tournament update beaver lake. Hey, you know what? I'm a little disappointed. I came in 11th place. Did not make the top 10 the final day. But you know what? I've got a smile on my face because normally beaver lake kicks my tail. You know, this is the tournament of the year, halfway through the season where you really got to do well, get past the big mountain, beaver lake, do well. That was my goal. I told my wife when I left town, I said, I just want to win this tournament. I want to make the top 10, and it'd be a really big deal. And I basically did it. Uh, accomplished it, got great points, come home with a little money in my pocket. That's a great thing. But let me tell you, practice was tough. If you saw my, my pre-tournament update, I didn't. I wasn't catching hardly anything. The last day of practice, I figured out something real interesting. First day, went to that area, caught 12 pounds. Second day, went back to that same area, caught 13.7. Yesterday, I struggled a little bit. I did lose two fish, two three-pounders jumped off that would have put me around 12 to 13 pounds and would have had me fishing today. But something bad and unfortunate happened. I had a dead fish penalty. And it's one of those things that happens. You know, my Ranger live wells, they work great, but I had a fish, I hooked him a little deep on a spinnerbait. The fish got hooked on the tongue, wasn't doing so well. The fish expired, uh, cost me eight ounces. It was one of those deals that just happens. That eight ounce penalty would have if I wouldn't have had it, it, would have put me in eighth place, and I've been fishing again today. Now, let me tell you about kind of what I was doing. You know, I couldn't get into the bait selection too much because I figured, hey, as competitive these guys are, they're all on Fish Hound, they're watching these reports, they're seeing what everybody's doing, and I didn't want to talk too much about it. But I did say I caught them on a River to Sea products, caught them on a Bruiser baits. Let me show you. Cat's out of the bag now, guys. The star of the show is the River to Sea Rover. This is a sweet, sweet little top water bait here. Check out the paint job on this thing. This is a paint job that actually I helped design. Yeah, it, it's, it's got a really nice blue back, chartreuse sides, white bottom. It, it really imitates a shad well. It's got great hooks on it. Caught a lot of fish. I probably caught 40 bass on this lure the first day of the tournament alone. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Second day of the tournament. Go back to the same general area. Fish have changed. Wind's blowing a little bit harder. Couldn't get them to eat a top water lure. So what did I do? Number two star of the show was the River to Sea spinnerbait. This is the one that Ish Monroe helped design. This is a great stained water spinnerbait. Of course, it has a chartreuse and white, double willow leaf blades. The shad were spawning in the areas early in the morning, and the double willow leaves are key when you have a shad spawn going on. So that's a 3 8 ounce in size. I like the lighter spinnerbaits because it keeps it in the strike zone longer. Kind of hovers that spinnerbait along. I was going down the shallow banks, shallow muddy banks with cover like bushes and lay down logs, throwing this spinnerbait, and again, day one, throwing the top water rover, gets you a lot of fish. Then, I had to switch up again, late on the second day, and on the third day, they got off the spinnerbait bite, did catch a few on it, and they got on the square bills. And again, this is a river to sea square bill here, Ishman Rose, a little, I think it's called the Little Papa, it's a pretty cool little bait, pretty much brand new to the market, but just a little square bill, shad color, as you can tell, Shad color there, shad color here on this top water, and again, even though this has chartreuse in it, it's still a shad colored spinnerbait. That's really good. Now, in between all that, as I would throw the top water, the spinnerbait, and the square bills around this shallow cover, before I would leave, I'd pick up my flipping stick and flip my little bruiser bait in there. This is a bait, <laughs> I tell you, I'm impressed with this thing. Bruiser has got this little bait called the Intruder. You've heard all about it. It set the record last year at Lake Okeechobee. Okay, this bait right here had 106 pounds caught on it at Lake Okeechobee with Brandon McMillan. I caught all my fish on it flipping this year at, at Lake Okeechobee. Um, awesome bait right there. Flip that in. That's got a little half ounce, actually a 3 8 ounce tungsten weight. Flip it in those lay down trees before I would leave. And the other thing is, pay attention. Every time I got bit in a lay down tree or a bush, caught a few fish, I'd remember where it is. I'd make a waypoint on my Garmin graph. It's very important. Waypoint that exact bush. There's hundreds of bushes in the water. I'd waypoint on the front of my ranger, that waypoint right there for that bush. I could come back an hour later and come back through that area, and guess what? That exact bush again would get bit. Those fish were using the same pieces of cover over and over again. So that was real important, and that was some of the keys to my success. So I went way up the rivers. I fished stained water. I fished moving baits for the most part and did a little mop-up with my bruiser baits. So that's, that's pretty much what happened. Looking forward to the Potomac River coming up soon. We'll see you guys. Thanks for uh, checking out fishhound.com, the most up-to-date fishing reports on the web. See you.